ministered unto him. Please be seated this morning and put your hands together for Jesus if you came. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning to church, especially welcome everyone to church, those of us on site and those probably watching. Wherever you're watching from, God of heaven has a word for you. There's a word that will turn things around for you. There's a word uh, that will bring joy. There's a word that will bring peace. And the name of the Lord shall be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, today I will bring us a word which I've captioned here as understanding spiritual fatherhood. Understanding what? Spiritual fatherhood. Understanding spiritual fatherhood. But for the purpose of understanding, I'd like us to understand that we have two fathers. You have your biological or biological parents and you have your spiritual parents. Is that understood? We have that in Ephesians, just to portray what I'm trying to bring forward. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It went further again in verse 2. He said, Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And the next one is said, That it might be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Now from these verses of scriptures, it is very clear. Paul, by the Spirit of God, is simply telling and letting us know that we have two spiritual, I mean two parents. The first one there, he talks about your spiritual parents. He said, Children, obey your parent in the Lord. Now, the word obey, the Greek word for obey simply means uh, to listen under. When you say to obey, it means to listen under. There's a place where you are, you sit to listen. That is why Jeremiah 3 verse 15 said, I will give you pastors after my heart who shall feed you. So when it talks about you obeying, it simply means you sit and listen. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. So your spiritual parents, they deserve your obedience. You hear. And mind you, when I say they deserve your obedience, it does not mean that every kind of instruction, you bring bleach and give you to drink. He said, drink, I want to drink. That is why you too ought to be a student of the Bible. Can somebody say student of the Bible? So that when you are in a place and the word is being preached, you can connect with what is being said. It went further in verse 2 here. He said, honor your father and your mother. That talks about your biological parents. Verse 1 there is simply telling us that we have spiritual parents and we are to obey. And I said the Greek word for obey means to do what? To listen under. You listen to obey. Every great athlete who is in sport today, sport athlete, they all have coaches. Are you with me? Your spiritual father comes on board, or your spiritual parents comes on board as your coaches. In verse 2, he said, honor your father and your mother. So that's what will happen to you. He said, which is the first commandment with promise. Honor your father and your mother. So that it might be well with you. So your biology, I mean your spiritual parents, they desire your what obedience and your biological parents deserve your honor we can break the two together right there praise the lord if we were told that the word obey means to do what to listen on that what about the word honor honor simply means um what or value to value when you say you honor somebody what, what are you doing you value them you va have value for your for your uh, biological parents have value for your spiritual parents he said that it might be well with you now there are two different things the biological parents are the ones that gave birth to you brought you to the wall here is that true they taught us the basic things that's why most of the time when you say students uh, children they are stubborn in school uh, the parents may want to go and blame the school the school said no you started training them that is why it is being said that uh, charity begins from where at home glory to god so you see there is a part of your biological parents there's a place that they are to play to handle and there's also a part that your spiritual parents can handle without missing word i want to say it with all humility anyone who said no i don't need a spiritual 
father or you don't need the spiritual parents then you discover that even if you are going astray there will be no one there to call you to order from our text this morning from first kings uh, chapter 19 verse 19 to 21 we're told about elisha and elijah the bible says so he departed thence and found elijah elijah was on his journey his mission his time you know to be taken away from the earth was coming so close it came so close that he needed to hand over the grace that god has invested upon his life so he was looking for someone that he could groom praise the lord someone whom he could train and while he was doing that he found the bible saying he found elisha the son of shepherd please understand the bible called him the son of shepherd Shaphat is the biological father of Elijah. So Elijah has his own biological father. But this time around, Elijah saw Elijah, who is the son of Shaphat. He said, who was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen. Elijah was not a poor man. Elijah was a businessman. He was a farmer. And the Bible says he had 12 oxen. Oxen can be likened to as a farmer in our days that has 12 tractors. Do you understand what I'm saying? tractors 12 tractors so he was a big time farmer he wasn't a pauper he was doing his business the bible say when he found him and what happened and elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him he passed by him there was a kind of a transference of grace and look at what happened and he left his oxen and ran after elijah elijah was not in ministry he was not a prophet, he wasn't a pastor, he was a businessman. So it doesn't matter where you are. When the grace of God wants to locate you, it will locate you. Glory to God. He was a businessman. But when this prophet passed him, and mind you, just like you don't choose your biological parents. How many of you choose your parents? No matter how they offend you. You can be offended, you squeeze your face, but at the end of the day, you are still bearing his name. Just because your father slapped you, you say, okay, I won't bear that name again. I changed my name from Moses to James. They say, what happened? Because my father slapped me. No, you will be angry. But at the end of the day, you will change your mind. You see, bear his mind. Is that true? Glory to God. I say, glory to God. He found him and something happened. Just like I said, you are born into a family. They gave birth to into a family. Likewise, you don't choose your spiritual parents. You don't choose it. You don't choose them. No. You are divinely connected to your spiritual parents. You get me this morning? You are divinely connected. And that is where the place of discernment comes on board. It's not everyone you call father. I mean spiritual father. It's so common. People can see a pastor and say, I want to be my spiritual father. I want to be my... No, everybody wants to be a spiritual father. No. Just like you only have one biological father, that is how you also have one spiritual father. You can have other mentors. Say mentors. The mentors, so many mentors. But for father, father is someone that begets you. Someone whose assignment is to bring you to the way of God. Someone who is to lead you and he has every right to correct you. Someone who is not afraid of you. Whether you have money. You know, there's, there are situations whereby somebody could claim to be a father of somebody and because he has money, he is afraid to correct him. Because if he correct him, he will stop giving him money. Praise the Lord. But this man, when he, he discerned it, there is something I saw in this man. He left all and he ran. And Elijah said, what happened? Go back to what you are doing. And he said, please permit me. He went back to his parent. And the Bible said out of the 12 oxen, he took one of them, he skilled prepare food just like a sent foot he left his business don't get me wrong i'm not telling you to leave what you are doing to start looking for a father amen he left his business and did what and came to elijah and the bible say he ministered to him glory to god i say glory to god he arose and went after elijah and ministered unto him he was not a poor man but he had seen something by divine connectivity. There was something that connected him with Elijah. He just knew it. He said, no, there is something that I've found in this man that is in me. Just like when you want to control the television, the TV said you have remote control. Is that true? 
Inside the television said, you have some chips there, and you have the same chips inside the remote control. So once you press it, there's going to be a connection. Praise the Lord. There's something in you that is in me. That is why in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, God said, before I form thee in your mother, I know thee. God is simply saying that we have met somewhere before. God is saying, I have met with you somewhere before. And where is that place? During creation, when he was creating you, there is contact. Is that true? When the porter is creating a pot, the clay, and it's molding, molding, there's going to be contact. The DNA, I mean, the fingerprints from the hands of God is all over the pots. It's all over you when God was creating you. His fingerprint rub all around you. So every time God sees you, he knows that we have met. There's something that is common between us. Glory to God. And not a thought, I think, towards you. Says a lot of people, they are thought of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And so when he saw him, he noticed that there is something that is in this man that is also in me. There's something I've seen in this man that I desire. He left all he was doing, and the Bible says he ran after Elijah and ministered unto him. The word ministered means he ran to serve him. He ran after him to serve him. Please hear me this morning. In the same chapter 2 of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12, the Bible says, And Elisha saw it and he cried. Now, is this chapter 2 is so interested in 2 Kings? From verse 1, God sent Elijah on an assignment. And Elijah, apart from Elisha, had other sons of the prophet. Are you with me this morning? There was like a school, a Bible school. They had students sons of the prophet but when god sent elijah elijah told elisha wait for me here for the lord have sent me and elisha said as long as the lord live it i will not let you i will go with you and they went together can we read it for words of emphasis from verse 2 please give me verse 2 let's see verse 2 studio and elijah said unto elisha tarry here i pray thee for the lord has sent me to where Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as, the, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Can you see that word? I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Next verse, verse 3. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel. Can you see? They were sons of the prophet. They came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today that is by revelation they all knew that something is about to happen they all knew that it was time for god to take elijah away i mean for christ's sake if you have that revelation is that not an opportunity for you to connect in order to receive but they were only mocking elijah and he said yeah i know i know it hold your peace next verse can we go faster please and Elijah said unto him, unto Elisha, tarry here. What happened? I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to where? Jericho. The first place was better. Is that true? Now, he said Jericho. And he said, as the Lord, and as thy soul liveth, I would not leave thee. So they went, or they came to Jericho. Please hear me. The encounter that took place in Bethel is different from what is happening in Jericho. Bethel means the house of God. Jericho means a place of, of encounter. It's a place of battle. Remember, you heard that the walls of Jericho fell down. God has sent me to Jericho. Somebody will have been satisfied with Bethel. It's okay, safe journey, sir. Let me just be enjoying myself. Safe journey. But Elisha was not satisfied. This morning, grace comes upon you not to be satisfied. Do not be satisfied with one breakthrough. You had one little breakthrough, you are satisfied. You had one little open door. You can't pray again. Why? Because something small has happened. But he said, no, I will go with you. He was not satisfied with Jericho. I mean, with the battle. He had to move to Jericho. Next verse, please. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know. What happened? I know it. Hold ye your peace. Next verse. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to where to Jordan. Look at different experiences. There's a place of Bethel. There's a place of where? Jericho. Now he said, The Lord has sent me to where? To Jordan. 
Wait here. Somebody will have said, okay, ah, let me enjoy this little money they gave me in Bethel and the one I got to Jericho. Uh, save, save journey, sir. I'll be waiting for you. But they said, no way. He said, no. I need an, ex an encounter. Yes, I said, no. The Lord leave it. And as I saw, leave it. I will not leave thee. And they went on. Next verse. And 50 men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar. Where are they viewing from? You see, the difference between sons and those who crossed, you discover that there are people that want to come and view from afar. And there are some who want to come close. There's a difference between staying afar and proximity. We talk about pro proximity, it, it means they stay from a far distance trying to watch what is happening. 50 sons of the prophet. If this 50 had joined faith with Elisha, I want to believe that the grace of Elijah will have been distributed upon all of them. But this 50, they of sons of the prophet, they went and stood and viewed from where? Afar off. I pray you will not be among those that stay afar off. They stay afar off. They believe with their mouth, but their heart is very far. They stay afar off. Let's see what will happen. Afar off. And they too went by. If those 50 had joined the two of them, the grace from Elijah will have rubbed upon them. And will have said 51 of them received the glory. 51 of them encountered God. But look at what happened. And they went forth and stood by Jordan. Next verse. And it came to pass when they were come, they were gone over Jordan, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken, very, very important, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Ah, mind you, we are talking about what? What are we talking about today? Understanding spiritual fatherhood. He said, I pray thee. He didn't ask him to give him money. Please hear me. Your relationship with your spiritual father is because you want to tap the things you have seen that you believe in. What do I give you? Well, I say, okay, that car that we left in Bethel, can you wheel it in my name? Or that house, there was nothing property here. Are you hearing me? There was nothing property. He said, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away. Now, this question, they don't ask this question from Bethel. They don't ask this question from Jordan or from, uh, from Jericho. They don't ask this Jordan from Jordan. Most of you, you are still in Bethel and you are waiting, you are expecting the Lord to ask you or to, to, you know, to tell you some things. No, there are some experiences you need to go through. There are some things you need to go through to test your faith. The trial of your faith. See, and Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion. So, he had value for the anointing. He had value for the grace. Your sense of value is what would determine the flow of virtue. Virtue will flow, but it will only flow to the people that have value for it. Remember, I told us that to honor means to do what? To value. To honor, to value. I want a double portion of your spirit upon me. Next verse, next verse, verse 10. Studio, please, fast, fast. Let's go. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Next verse. And it came to pass, as they still went on, they were still talking. <laughs> and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. And horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. Elijah was one of the men that did not die. Elijah and Moses, they didn't die. Moses, God said, Go to the mountain, go up there. And he climbed the mountain. God showed Moses Canaan. And the reason why it happened that way was Moses cursed the children of Israel. He told them, He called them, Thou stiff naked people. And God said, for cursing my people. That is what I want you to understand. It is not in the power of any man to curse the flock of God. The flock of Jesus. Not even their spiritual fathers. Glory to God. Moses was taken away. Likewise, this man also, I mean, uh, Elijah, the same thing too. The Bible says, the went up by a wild wind into heaven. Next verse. Next verse. 
And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father. Can you see it now? Remember when we started from 1 Kings 19, Elisha was introduced as, as Elisha, the son of who? Shaphat. I told you Elisha has his biological father. Is that true? His son name was Shaphat. But look at Elisha now. When he had this encounter, what did he call Elijah? He didn't call him my pastor. He said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces out of anger. He said, why? It's too early. He tore his clothes. Next verse. Look at the next verse 13. And he took up also the mantle the mantle could be anything. It could be maybe uh, it could be a napkin or whatever. Just like what they hang. Amen. It could be a towel. A long towel that the prophet just hung maybe for coal to protect coal from entering him. But a mantle could be any anointed material from a prophet, from a man of God. It's a mantle. So the Bible say, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. That mantle did not fall by accident. Because before now he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, I want to receive what? Double. And so when he was leaving, he said, I want, this man has, has followed. This man has followed. Something was released. Something was dropped. They dropped something. He said he went down back and stood by the bank. After that mantle dropped, he took the mantle. He went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Remember, before they crossed Jordan, him and Elijah. Elijah had to struck that Jordan River with the mantle, with his towel, and struck, and the water opened. You see, a son is someone who studied his father. Study his spiritual father. You don't go to church so that your pastor become an idol. That everything you want, no. There are there are seasons where you learn. You learn some things. That is where the power of observation comes on board. You learn some things. You learn. I read some books about Kenneth Copeland and the uh, late Ora Robert. Kenneth Copeland wanted to go to school. He had no money. And somehow he met Ora Robert. And Kenneth Copeland had some little knowledge of flying aircraft. And Ora Robert has, they, they have plane then. So they were looking for pilot. And Copeland enrolled in the Bible school, but he has no money to pay school fees. But he knew how to fly plane. And so they employ him. Are you hearing me now? So he was the one flying or a robot when they are going for crusade. And what he does, he will fly him. And when they get down, he stands to observe. During in the healing school, when healing is taking place, he stands to observe and to see all the things that a robot is doing. Through observation, some things was dropping in him. Are you hearing me? So it's not enough to be in a church or to be around of a father or a spiritual father. And you can't tap anything. No! He took the mantle. Now the person who was doing it is no more alive. He has gone. Now it is time for him to cross over Jordan. How will he cross? He didn't know how to swim. But he had the mantle of Elijah with him. And he walked towards Jordan. And he said, can we go? Next verse. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And did what? He smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had smitten the waters, what happened? They parted heater and teeter. And Elisha went over. The same way him and his master crossed the Jordan. As they crossed the water close. Now, the person that opened it for him is no more there. That is why, if it is your pastor that is always praying for you, there will be times that the pastor will not be there with you. So what have you learned? What have you learned? So he struck the thing open and he crossed, he walked over. Next verse, look at it. Next verse. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view, because there are people, who, now you came to church, there are people, your neighbor, who are busy viewing. Amen. They are busy viewing. Now, don't close. 
What did they preach? Are you hearing me now? There are people that want to mesmerize, they want to mock you, they want to say things. All this church you are going to, what, so what is really happening? Uh, you, your testimony has not yet happened yet. They want to make fun of you. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, Talk to me. You didn't come. Say it louder. So the thing has become visible. I pray for someone here. For every service in the secret. For every labor in the secret. Uh, the grace of God that we need to announce you to the world. It shall be real for all to see. Be evident for all to see. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said the spirit of Elijah. God rests on Elijah. And they came to meet him. And they bowed themselves to the ground before him. Those were people that were mocking him. Hear me. There are seasons. There are seasons to be lonely. There are seasons. Look as if you have been forgotten. But I tell you. If only you will remain focused. And you are looking onto what God has placed before you. The same people who were mocking you. The same people who were laughing at you. They will come back to sing your Hosanna. They will come back to celebrate with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can you imagine 50 of them coming. Just standing and seeing 50 people lying before you. Are you hearing me? That is where you see the carnal people in the world cannot understand some things that happens in the kingdom. You saw now 50 came and bowed down before one man. If it would be in our days today that you have f Facebook and Instagram, somebody who is there and top 50 of them will have just snapped them. I will have just posted it. Can you imagine how they are worshipping a human being? The truth about the matter is that no one is called to worship any human being. But you see, you can go closer to God and receive what God is carrying. And if men sense it, those who dear, who are sensitive to sense what you are carrying will not reference you. If we reference God and you don't have regard or you don't reverence your spiritual father, please hear me. There are two different things. Biological father, spiritual father. Biological parents, spiritual parents. The biological parents, they, they groom us up from childhood, we were toddlers and the rest. They teach us the basic things. But while you are now matured, you are growing forward, you have a spiritual father who will continue. His assignment is to take you through the things of God. His assignment is to bring you through the ways of God. You don't have a spiritual father whom you don't have access to. How can you somebody say spiritual father? And you can't access him. Somebody called me and was asking me, a pastor, he wants to start a ministry. And I asked him, I said, so who, who is your spiritual father? He said, I have them so many. Some they are on Facebook, some are on their books. I said, have you? He said, no, I don't have access to any of them. I said, how do you call them your spiritual father? They could be your mentors. Amen. You have books you are reading of somebody you love, you admire. That person could be a mentor. But it's not your spiritual father. Your spiritual father could be somebody that you can access. You have his contact. You can access him easily. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And after I shared with him. Then later on he said okay. Uh, and you too. Amen. And you too. He said but you are the only one that have your contact. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And I gave him some books. I said go and read these two books. When you are true get back to me. When he finished reading he called me. Two weeks ago, he says, I'm done. And I began to share with him. You see, there are people who will come close to you. They are only coming to learn something. When they get what they are looking for, they vanish. You don't find them again. And there are those who are there with you. A good example. When you go to a garage, mechanic garage, you find out of the apprentice, there are some apprentices who are stubborn. The master, the, those stubborn ones, every time they want to, maybe a new car that is in town, they brought for repairs. And they want to buy some things in Ikoku. You will call the stubborn one. Uh, come, John, come here. Take the Ikoku. So as he's going to Ikoku, he will open the bonnet. And we call all those lawyer ones. And begin to show them. He said, this is a valve. This one is this, this one. That time, that stubborn one is on his way to Ikoku. By the time he comes back, he's already tired. He won't know what they have done. How they lose the thing. The next time again, they want to buy tire. He said, come here, John. 
go to Ikoku. Glory to God. Because his spirit is not there. His mind is not there. May you not be sent to Ikoku. In the great name of Jesus. So what am I saying this morning? Please look at it. From the second Kings chapter 2 there. You can see that there is an encounter in Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. It's, it's a good experience. But Elisha said no. As long as the Lord lived, I will go with you. They went to Jericho. Jericho is a wonderful encounter too. But they said I will go with you. They went to Jordan. He said I will still go with you. Never you be satisfied with the encounters you've had in life. Every opportunity you have before your spiritual father. Let it be an opportunity for you to receive something. Are you hearing me? I will never forget this encounter I told us. I've shared this with us. Some six, seven years ago, that I went for a program in, in, in a worry. I was coming back, and Pastor David the Buman was the person that preached there. And when he saw me, he said, Pastor Solo, you drove down. I said, no, sir. He said, okay, so we are going together. Now, we sat together in the car. He sat, and I sat by his left-hand side. I thought I would join one of the cars behind. He's, as we're leaving, he said, where's Pastor Solo? I came to the window. He said, Pastor, open the door. I opened the door. He said, Pastor, come in. He said, Pastor, sit down. Pastor, close the door. As we were going, it was like a dream to me, praise the Lord, to someone whom you, re, you revere. I sat with him there, and he said, Pastor, there's drink here. There's, I, I said, thank you, sir. I refused to look at his face. I was just there praying. I was just speaking in tongues. My body was heavy. I was fasting that day. I was just praying. He noticed it when he looked at me. He noticed what was going on. He would just laugh. Amen. I didn't talk to him. He was the one talking. Anything he said, yes, sir. Okay, sir. No, sir. Was I afraid? No. It was a sign of honor. Such kind of opportunity doesn't come every day. And when we got to Portacot here, I was planning in my mind. I said, I will tell him, sir. Uh, I want to take a taxi. They said, we're going to the house. I was fasting. And we got to the house. We enter in. I sat down. The next thing, he said, uh, somebody's going to attend to you. I was fasting and they brought food. He said, oh, God said you should eat. Will I say, no, I won't eat. I'm fasting. No, my prayer has been answered. I break the fast right here. Can somebody say, I break the fast? It was so stupid to say, I'm fasting. You are standing before your mentor, your spiritual father. And he's maybe give you something. He said, no, thank you, sir. Today I'm fasting. Ah, how spiritual are you? I, 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 I don't know. He said, no, sir, I'm fasting. I had a, one of my daughters when I was pastoring in Sierra Leone then she shared a testimony they were married believing God for a child I didn't know I was transferred there just some few months and she came to the office I was drinking tea a cup of tea was with me and I said daddy, daddy can I join you I said why not I gave her the cup the one I was drinking I saw the way she grabbed it I didn't know what was happening she drank everything it was some months two months later that she came out to testify she said, we have been believing God for a child. I came to daddy's office and I saw him drinking tea. Now, what is in tea? Sugar and what? He said, and I asked, he gave me the, and I drank what he was drinking. And guess what? I took in. Now, God in heaven knows, I didn't know what happened. Are you hearing me now? But I think she, 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 she had value for that moment. She was able to maximize it. Learn how to maximize every opportunity you have when you are standing before your spiritual father. Learn how to maximize it. Learn how to maximize every opportunity you have. In 2 Kings 3 verse 11. 2 Kings 3 11. These were kings who were confused. They didn't know what to do. The Bible said, but Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? One of the king of Israel's servant answered and said, Here is who? Elisha, the son of who? Shaphat, which poured water on the hand of Elijah. You can see his father's name appeared here. Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who poured water. So he has his biological father, and now he poured water. He ministered to Elijah. The word pour water means to minister. The word poor water means to serve. We can inquire of him because we can see that the grace of Elijah is at work in the life. If you read Bible's um, research, you discover that Elisha did times two of the miracle that Elijah did. Every father 
the heart desire of every father is that their children should be better than them is that not true elijah did times two of the miracle that elijah did now hear me if elijah got double portion from elijah what will have the next person who is gehazi gehazi was to take the anointing of elijah to continue from where elijah stopped but because gehazi has what was 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 not right he missed it instead of taking the anointing he collected leprosy there is a time to struggle there's a time to enjoy the general Naaman came with his leprosy and God used Elijah I mean Elijah he used Elijah to do what to restore him back and Naaman brought some gifts to Elijah Elijah said no I won't take anything from you take it back Gehazi was there in his mind he said wow look at all this all this is it a Saudi material? My boss, I want to take it. As soon as they left, the Bible says he went through the back and pursued the general. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. And when Naaman turned, he saw Gehazi running. And he said, sorry, as soon as you guys left, some visitors came. And my master said, I should come and collect some things. And Naaman was so excited. And released those things to Gehazi. Gehazi went to his house to hide them. He hid them. Then he appeared before his master. And Elijah said to him, where comest thou? Ask your neighbor, where comest thou? That is, where are you coming from? And he said, nowhere. I went to urinate. I went to ease myself. And he said to him, he said, didn't not my spirit. He said, he's, my spirit followed you. While you were running, pursuing after Gehaz, I mean, uh, after Naaman. He said, for your information, the leprosy of Naaman has come upon you. He asked him, is it the time to receive raiment? Is it the time to receive money? No. Even in ministry, there is a time to labor. There is a time for rest. You don't miss the time to labor and you are looking for enjoyment. And that is why this young generation of ministers, by all means, I want to break forth. By all means, I want to make it. I want to believe this is one church, this is one place whereby I am not concerned about what people call me. Some children say, ah, they call me by my name. And you hear the parents say, ah. I say, is that not my name? Glory to God. And one of the things, because it, it can erode, it can shift the way you think. Why do you call me pastor? You don't want to call me daddy? And it's common with pastor's wife too. Where you see a pastor's wife said, you can't call me mommy? And this is one church where, but no, it, it's not part of me to say to call me daddy. Daddy for father for him. It's not the way you call me. It's what is in your heart. Because you can call me with your mouth, but your heart is very far. Please, don't get this wrong. Your spiritual father could be your senior. Pastor, please stand up, sir. Amen. Age-wise, you can be my senior. You are 50-something, sir. I'll be 60. Uh, tell me your age now. 57. I will be 52 this year. Praise the Lord. I'll be 52. So age-wise, he's my senior. So, but that won't stop him from looking for a, a spiritual father. To say, no, let me look for somebody who is my senior. You know, I can't be calling this uh, praise. Please sit down. Don't get it wrong. A spiritual father or spiritual fathers also make mistakes. Spiritual fathers are not angels. Spiritual fathers, your spiritual parents, they are humans. Humans, they didn't choose themselves, but God chose them. Praise the Lord. So stop looking at their weaknesses. Stop looking at their weaknesses. Rather, look at their strength in order for you to get what you desire, what you are looking for. Say to your neighbor here. Praise the Lord. Paul was speaking to the Romans. In Romans chapter 1 verse 11. He said, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. I long to see you that I may do what? Somebody is not here this morning. That I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. So spiritual gift cannot be imparted by your biological parents. Spiritual gift can only be imparted by your spiritual parents. They impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end, ye may be established. Ye may be established. 
Now in 2 Chronicles, the 20 verse 20, it said, believe the Lord your God, and what will happen to you shall be established. Believe, uh, it shall be established. Believe also is perfect, and what happened, you shall prosper. God's method here is men. There are things that God cannot come down to the earth to do. That is why he has position. Position mentors, position fathers, spiritual fathers. For us to be able to locate. And thank God for Elijah. He was able to locate his own. In case you don't have a spiritual father, then it looks as if you are your own. One of us shared a testimony here. And he, he said, favor. He said the mom, they were at home and the mom fainted. The mom went to the bedroom, to the toilet, to eat at around 2 a.m. And the mom fainted in the toilet. And he rushed in there. He didn't know what to do, 2 a.m. According to his testimony, he said right there, he said, the God of Pastor Solomon. Not me, I didn't even hear when he was praying. I was sleeping. But he said, the God of Pastor Solomon. And according to his testimony, he said there was restoration in the toilet, in the, in the bedroom, right there. The mom received strength. Glory to God. I say glory to God. That I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Please hear me. Every opportunity you have to stand before the anointed. See how to maximize that opportunity. In order to receive what they carry. Hear this. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 41. The Bible said. He said he that received a prophet. In the name of a prophet shall receive what? A prophet's reward. The prophet may not even know what he's carrying. Jesus had virtue. A woman came and touched. And the Bible said, Jesus said, who touched me? He brought confusion. But the woman came out. Said, I'm the one that touched you. So virtue was flowing. To every anointed man of God. There are virtues that you can tap. There are anointings that you can tap, you can carry from it. In Mark chapter 1, verse 20 and verse 20, Mark chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, please. Mark 1, 19. The Bible says, And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the sheep, mending their nets. Emphasis, the son of Zebedee. They have a father, biological father. But next verse, verse 20. Look at 20. And straight away, he called them. And what happened? They left their father, Zebedee, in the sheep with the higher servant. And they went after him. He called them. He called them. There was a connection. Like I said, you don't, you don't just choose your father. There are some who change father. You, you must understand what it is. You must have an understanding of what it is. A father whose, whose word you don't believe in can never be a blessing to you. You can just be there occupying space, but it can never be a blessing to you. It will never, can never be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord. They left their father. Just the same way Elijah left his family. He left his business and he ran and followed Elijah. And his life did not remain the same again. Double portion of the grace that is at work in the life of Elijah came upon him. The same thing also we saw here. These guys, they left their fathers. And they followed Jesus. I will give you pastors after my heart. Who shall feed you? Who shall feed you? Please. You should be able to see, to know whether you are growing. If you are not growing, then something is wrong. I mean, to grow spiritually. You must able to understand and you differentiate it you draw the line now many a times spiritual father may not necessarily give you money don't get me wrong may not necessarily give you money in my days before i went to bible school 25 years or how many years ago 25 years ago we never had access to any pastor there was no phone then once in a while, you go to a big man's house and you see dish. Today, everybody have dish. You can watch even in your phone. But those days, except you are lucky to enter a rich person's house, that you see that big black dish. Sometimes we stay by the window to watch some things. And you're watching Christian message. You stay by the window to watch because you don't have access to go. There are people I saw that I desire. I've seen them as mentors. When I see the miraculous. So the miraculous I have been desired. 
I've desired it for long. I was on the foreign field and I saw TBN, this Trinity Broadcasting Network. They were airing and they said they want to take Max, this is a satellite dish, to, to, uh, east, uh, to where? To the Middle East. They needed people to be a part of it. I was watching here in Africa and I just connected. I saw the address, what to do to pay, and I took it, came back to Nigeria. I was still subscribing every month. I was subscribing. I said, Lord, I may not be there, but I know the seed I'm sowing one day, I will also appear in TBA. Glory to God. To be a part of it, you, you connect with it. Not mind it, because spiritual things, they are slippery. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. They left all and followed. Why? Because they desire something. I said, I've longed to see that I may impact onto you some spiritual gift. That at the end, you may be established. You may be established. Once you have made up your mind that you want to stand and walk with God, before you know what is happening, there will be a connection. You find your father, your spiritual father. And, mentor. and many a times, please, like I said, it may not necessarily be money. If you are sensitive, you are close to a father, you draw things. One of my mentors, I went out and uh, he was preaching and I had a wristwatch. I had a wristwatch. Somebody gave me that wristwatch over 300 and something thousand. And I was so happy wearing that wristwatch. And the man of God was preaching and uh, I was blessed. That day. You know what I did? I pulled the wristwatch. I pulled it with all excitement. I carried some gifts when I was going for that program. I released it. It's not until somebody, you know, comes out and said, uh, "There's somebody here." The Lord said, "You're going to give me. You're going to give." No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. The cars I had, I had the witness to release those cars. I took them to my father. I said, the Lord said, I should bring this. Bring this to the ministry. Bring this to you. Amen. And I tell you, God is not unrighteous of your labor of love. In whatever area you have labored in secret, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek. I'd like to understand this morning here, if there's anyone who we see under any attack, satanic attack, Hear my voice this morning here. That hole is hereby cursed. That hole is hereby broken. The hole of sickness, the hole of disease, the hole of concern that is out trying to frustrate your life, they are hereby cursed. In the name of Jesus. I got a message from one of my son. Two weeks ago, I just saw the message came in. 2 a.m. when I woke up, I saw he sent that message. He was praying for me. And when I saw it, I said, this prayer came timely. Amen. And I replied to him, God will honor you. So it's not until you give money. Are you hearing me now? There should be, con there should be a connection. One of my daughters in the U.S. sent a prayer clip. She was in the church praying. And somehow she came under the anointing. And I saw, I don't know how she did it, but her phone. She just recorded. And she was praying in the church. And the next thing I was hearing her praying for semi. I pray for semi, the establishment of semi. That is Calvary Experiencing International. She was praying and she released the this thing. It came in when I saw it. I said, Oh, it's been a while we've talked. But someone who could be in the church and you can hear in the background other people were praying. I didn't send any message and say, Pray for semi. But I got the clip came forth. It shows somebody even in the state is an intercessor, is praying for the church. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Just like a father connects with his sons, connects with his children. That is how the children too, in your closet, you pray for your father. You pray for your spiritual parents, you pray for your biological parents. When I stand here every day, I pray during the devotion. And I say, Lord, I lift up everyone that believes in this altar. Every son and daughter, home and abroad, that prayer covers you. Many a times you travel, many a times you go to work, you are not even aware someone is praying for you. I mean, someone, that is a job of a father. David was saying, he said, I was watching, taking care of my father's flock. A lion came, a bear came and took one. He said, I caught the bear, I caught the lion. 
So we must not allow, a father will not allow the bears of life, the lions of this world, to tamper with the destiny of God's people. Hear this. I am under an oath, an oath, to lead each and every one of us to wherever God has destined for you. Not to lie. I'm under an oath, and God bears me witness to lead as many, not to lead everybody. There are those who come in looking for what to get. Once they get it, they find their way. Now I'm talking about those who believe in this grace. My sword will be your sword. My grace will be your grace. Whatever that can pull me down cannot pull you down. I thought you say, man, this morning here. Whatever that is afraid of me will be afraid of you. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. They will add your name after this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. So please, as I close this morning, never you allow anyone, anywhere you are where they are talking down on any father, any spiritual father, any pastor, any mentor, whether you don't believe in that person, what do you do? Close your mouth and leave that place. Are you hearing me? So that you don't attract some kind of cases. In case you see Miriam and Aaron, you can ask them. They were gossiping against Moses. Miriam was the eldest. Aaron, Ness. Moses was the younger. But God chose to use Moses. And Moses was a stammerer. Miriam, the eldest, and her brother, Aaron, two of them, they, were, they gang up against Moses. And they were telling him, are you the only one that God, that God is, can, can speak to? God is also speaking to us. Who are you? Who are you? And if he's from the western part of Nigeria, he said, who are you, Ray? Praise the Lord. And as they ganged up, God came to them. He said, why must you talk? Speak against my servant. And God brought leprosy on Miriam. You know why God did not touch Aaron? Because Aaron was acting, was wearing the effort of the priest. He was wearing something. Something that the priests used to wear those days. So because he was under, just like a governor. When a governor is on seat, he's under immunity. EFCC cannot arrest him. Is that true? But as soon as he leaves power, he's on his way to the airport, they were arresting him. So Aaron was wearing that thing. That even God himself respects his law. God did not touch Aaron. Because of what? The priestly garment that was on him. But on Miriam, leprosy came on her. Leprosy. They had to go back to beg Moses. And Moses had to beg God, praise the Lord, before the leprosy left Miriam. You may see some things you don't like in your spiritual fathers. Close your eyes. The good ones you see you desire, take it. Take the good ones and pray for them. Pray for them. Ask for God's intervention. Ask for God's help. If there's any work I wanted to, to have done or to do, it's not to become a pastor. If I have my way, I think uh, I'll prefer to, to do something else. Amen. Because as, 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 as a pastor, there are places you won't enter. If I go and I enter that club, they call home club. You say, ah, I just enter to see what is happening. You know what? I saw pastor. I saw him in that club. Some were even painted. I saw him with a bottle of beer. Glory to God. <laughs> Forgotten that I'm also a human. <laughs> And by so doing, some now trying to please people, and you're just walking now, just trying to be an angel, amen. Just walking like this, as if you can't you can offend anybody. Pray for your fathers, pray for your pastors, pray for ministers, pray for the body of Christ, pray for believers around the world. Let the will, the counsel of God be done in our lives. Let our heart desires be granted us by faith. Let our expectations begin to locate us. Let those things we have long waited for, husbands, wives, children, businesses, good jobs, let's all begin to come our way. And I want to pray for everyone this morning from my heart. I want to pray for you this morning. It's going to be, there's a, there's a difference between praying from the head and praying from, from the heart. There are some prayers you get is from the head. And there are some prayers that flows from the heart. Stand to your feet this morning, everybody. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Glory to God. So uh, you, you, you have seen the difference between having uh, spiritual parents and having biological parents. Your biological parents have where they lead you to. Spiritual parents will lead you the ways of God. Amen. Not to allow you to go astray. Spiritual parents, they are not to complicate your spiritual journey. But they are to make it to look simpler. To make it to be easier for you. It's I give you pastors who shall feed you. 
So the assignment of a pastor is to feed. Amen. And for you to be fed, you need to have the spirit of humility to be able to sit down. Amen. He's somebody who is sitting. When people who came for miracle to Jesus, Jesus said, make them to sit down first. Let them sit down. They sat down before the place of the miracle came on board. In a moment, lift up your hands above your head and just receive grace this morning and say, Father, I receive the blessing of the Father. I receive the blessing of the Father. I receive the blessing of the Father in the house this morning. I position myself. I come this day. My hearts, they are open, Lord. Let every pronouncement that's going to be coming forth from the altar in a moment uh, begin to find a place in my heart. Come on, can you position your heart right now? Position your heart right now, everyone. Sheta libra do si kataria bado se sheke bagata yada. Masete ya gatoa. I karabado se sheke ya talabada. Aseke ta ya gata ne madagata ya gata. Maragata ya gata. E palo bradia to. Rabata ya gata ne bada. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your eyes first before we pray. Even biological parents. Do you know that Noah? Noah had sons. Noah planted something. He drank from it. He became drunk. Amen. And he slept. He was naked. And one of his sons came in and saw the father's nakedness. Guess what? He ran and called his other brother. Come and see how that is naked. The other two, they came. Those two were so sensitive. They didn't come straight. They came backward. Amen. They refused to look at their father's nakedness. And they carried something. They walked. They covered him. And when Noah woke up from his sleep. The question, how did he know? Because he was drunk. When he woke up, he released curses upon the one that looked at his nakedness. Praise the Lord. That is why I say, honor your father, your mother. So in case your father is still alive, learn how to respect, to honor their words. That it may be well with you. Do you know why some people, it's, it's not well with them? Because their parents curse them. May your mother never say you are cursed. May your father never, and God will sit down on his throne, will watch them curse you. Most people are suffering today because they are under the curse of their parents. That it might be well with you. Some people, it's not well with them. It's not which is so. It's their parents. They've forgotten about them. You can give guests money, give money, do for the Christmas, but your parents are there. When was the last time you sent money to them? Send money to your parents, to your father, to your mother. When was the last time? It's a very simple question. Glory to God. He said that it might be well with thee. And your days be long here on earth. No more premature death for you. No one will experience premature death here. He said your days be long here on earth. Look at it. Many years back, before my father died, as a first son, I called for a meeting. I called my siblings. We were all sitting down. And I told my father, I said, um, in case we have offended you anyway, and you curse us, today, myself and my younger ones, we are saying, we are sorry, forgive us. Face my mom, we are sorry, forgive us. And we say, you too. In case you have offended us too, we too, we forgive you. Glory to God. I had to make that peace before my father died. And I'm flowing with my mom. Every month, I make sure I send message to her. I call her, talk to her. So, I am covered. That, that scripture in Ephesians covered me. That it might be well with you. So, it doesn't matter how many witches that are ganging up to pull me that it will never stand. Are you hearing me? Some things you run to pastors, you go to prayer houses. Check out. It could be from your biological parents. Hallelujah. That it might be well with you. He says, say to the righteous, it shall be well with them. My assignment here this morning is to say to you again, it shall be well with you. It is well with you. Lift up your two hands above your head. It is well with you. It is well with the works of your hands. It is well with your home. It is well with your children. It is well with your husbands. It is well with your wives. In the mighty name of Jesus, on this blessed day, I stand here today under the grace that is at work in my life. I pronounce the blessings of God upon you. I said, be blessed in the city. Be blessed out of the city. Your name shall be called blessed. In the name of Jesus, 
whatever that was not working in your life before now, I speak motion into it. Wherever that they've shut doors against you right now, I command such doors to open up. For the Bible says, I am he that confirmed the words of my servant and performed the counsel of my messenger. I decree I open doors for you. I decree that the gates that leads to favor be open to you. In the great name of Jesus, that a hard moment ceases in your life. That dry season ceases in your life. I speak refreshing upon you. I speak refreshing upon you. No more concern around you again. I decree and declare every form of depression in your life comes to an end. In the great name of Jesus, whatever veil the enemy has placed around you that has blocked you from being seen as a single lady, that has blocked you from being or from receiving the business or the contract that you desire, this morning such veils are here by the strong. I speak increase to you. Your works of your hands are blessed. In the great name of Jesus, health-wise, the whole, an attack from the pit of hell to mesmerize your health ceases this moment. I plead the precious blood of Jesus upon your life. Let that blood, that blood over 2,000 years has never stopped speaking. The blood is speaking. It has not lost its thread. That grace that is in the blood is hereby released upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus enjoy the father's blessing wherever you turn to from this day things will turn for you wherever they rejected you before now they will send for you I said they will send for you the same people who have used their mouth to laugh at you after the service I see them celebrating it I see them coming to bow down to you in the great name of Jesus I have never once sat down and I put my hands on my cheek and I've been thinking, oh God, where are you? No, the same way that God has been our shield and buckler, that will be your testimony from today. I pray for you that before the need arises, supplies will be there. Supplies will be there. Every man and woman in the face of the earth who is supposed to help you to move you to the next phase of your life as you live here today, God will connect you with them. God will connect you with them. God will connect you with them. Connect you with your helpers. Connect you with timely help. Receive it by faith. In your places of work, enjoy favor. Favor with management, favor with authorities, in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree the peace of God that surpasses every understanding, rest and abide with you. In the name of Jesus, I said to someone this morning, your broke days are over. Your broke days are over. Your dry days are over. Welcome into a new season. A season of surplus, a season of abundance, a season of grace, a season where goodness and mercy shall follow you. Be compassed with the hand of God. Be mantled with the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, you will never know a better yesterday. Every day of your life shall be a plus of the previous. In the name of Jesus, I disconnect you from the eyes of the wicked one. As they shoot at others, they won't see you to shoot at you. You and your family, you are protected. Your children protected. Husband, wife protected. Businesses, everything that concerned you protected. It's a new season. It's a new day for you. It's a new day. You came in with any kind of an ailment right now under the sound of my voice. Let there be calmness. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up those hands above your head and give God all the glory right now, everyone. Give God all the glory. If God speak to you, if you had something in this service, come and show it to him. Celebrate the Lord. His word, the hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. We worship you. We celebrate your faithfulness. You have done all things well. So you alone be all the glory. You alone be all the praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Bow down your heads right now. You are here this morning. You know you're born again. 
That is where the journey begins from. You want to meet with Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Whatever you are placed in the kit by raise of hands. Anyone here this morning? You want to give your life to Jesus? Don't be ashamed this morning. Anyone here this morning? In the kit by raise of hands. Anyone here this morning? You are watching anywhere around the globe? Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I'm a sinner. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood. To serve the living God. Take my names out of the book of dead. Write my names in the book of life. From today, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises to serve the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you for the life of these precious ones. We break the whole of sin and sickness in their life. And we release upon you a fresh grace to prosper and excel. Welcome into the families of believers. Whatever you lay your hands upon from today, you shall excel. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Those of us who have prayed these prayers, I'd like to see you are now a child of God. Look for a Bible-believing church close to you and identify yourself with them. Please, let's be seated. Let's be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed this morning? Now, God's word speaking, he says, in the gospel of Luke chapter 6, he said, Give and it shall be given back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over so shall men give back to your bosom. So God has positioned men to give to you. He said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy banks be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst forth with new wine. It's offering time. I say it's offering time. Let's package our offerings. Rise on our feet. You have your tithe. You can walk out to the front this morning. Lift them up. You have your seed, whatever seed you are sowing, just tag it, indicate it on the envelope there. And those of us who are watching online, please, we have the instruction there. You can follow suit. So lift up those hands above your head and just worship the Lord and say, Father, out of the abundance you give to me, I have come with this to say thank you. I cannot pay you for what you've done, but I've come to appreciate you. Can you just bless the Lord, everybody? Let's bless and magnify our King. Let's celebrate him this morning. Oh, thank you for all you have done. Thank you for favor. Thank you for grace. We celebrate you, Lord, for your awesome presence. All these hands lifted up, none we go down. In the great name of Jesus. And those of us who came out with your tithe or those who may transfer, I decree and declare that the mystery behind tithing will speak for you continually. In the great name of Jesus. Those watching online also, you are part of it. I decree and declare the God of Samaria will visit you wherever you are. In the great name of Jesus, this season shall be unto us seasons of abundance before the need arises, supplies will be there. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and amen. Let's cast our seat rejoicingly. Hallelujah.